In this video, we're going to install Ubuntu in VirtualBox. Normally, Linux is installed as your main operating system, just like Windows or Mac OS. It's fast, free, and powerful, but for beginners, or those just getting started, it can come with a few headaches. That's why, in this video, we're not replacing your main OS. Instead, we'll install Ubuntu inside your current system, using VirtualBox. This way, your main operating system stays untouched, and there's no risk of messing anything up. VirtualBox is an app that lets you install and run other operating systems safely. Because everything runs inside the app, you can do anything with Ubuntu without affecting your actual computer. Plus, you can still use your main OS at the same time. So let's begin. First, let's download VirtualBox. Go to the official VirtualBox website. Choose the version based on your operating system, Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Since I'm using Windows, I'll download the Windows version. Once the file is downloaded, run the installer. The installation process is very simple. Just follow the steps on screen and click next when needed. You can leave all the default settings as they are. After it finishes, VirtualBox will be installed and ready to use. Now let's download Ubuntu. Go to the official Ubuntu download page, you'll see two versions, LTS, which stands for long-term support, and the regular version, which has newer features but less support time. I recommend the LTS version, it's more stable and supported for a longer time. Click the download button, the file is large, around 6 GB, so it might take a while depending on your internet speed. Once the download is complete, we're ready to create our virtual machine in VirtualBox. Now open VirtualBox. Click the new button to create a new virtual machine. First, give it a name. I'll call mine my Ubuntu 24.04, but you can choose any name you like. Next is the machine folder. This is where your virtual machine's files will be saved. I strongly recommend choosing a location on your SSD, since it's much faster than a hard drive. You can still use an HDD, but performance will be noticeably slower. Then, under ISO image, click and select the Ubuntu ISO file you downloaded. VirtualBox will automatically detect the operating system. Now, check the box that says Skip Unattended Installation. This will give us full control during the Ubuntu setup, which is exactly what we want. Now let's configure the virtual hardware. First is memory, RAM. You can decide how much RAM to assign to Ubuntu. As a rule of thumb, don't assign more than half of your total RAM. For example, if you have 16 GB of RAM, the maximum I recommend is 8 GB. The minimum Ubuntu requires is 4 GB, but if you want a smooth experience, more is better. I have 64 GB of RAM, so I'll assign 8 GB for this virtual machine, which is plenty. Next is the CPU setting. Here, you choose how many processor cores you want to give Ubuntu. Again, I recommend assigning up to half of your available cores. For example, if your CPU has 6 cores and 12 threads, the safe zone is up to 6 CPUs in VirtualBox. I'll assign 4 CPUs, which is ideal for smooth performance. Now we set the storage size. This is how much space Ubuntu can use inside the virtual machine. You can set it to 25GB minimum, but I recommend at least 32GB. If you plan to install extra apps or updates later, go even higher like 64 gigabytes or even 128 gigabytes, if you have the space. Leave the rest of the settings as they are and click finish. Now your virtual machine is created, with custom RAM, CPU, storage, and the Ubuntu ISO all ready to go. Now it's time to start the virtual machine and install Ubuntu. In VirtualBox, select the virtual machine you just created and click the start button. A new window will open, this is the virtual machine screen. Just remember, if your mouse gets stuck, press the right control key to free it. After a few moments, the machine will boot from the Ubuntu ISO file you selected earlier. You'll see a menu. Choose the first option, try or install Ubuntu. 
Ubuntu will now begin to load, at this point, it's running directly from the ISO file, nothing is installed yet. It may feel a bit slow, and anything you do now won't be saved. So let's go ahead and install it properly, once the desktop loads. First, you'll be asked to choose your language. I recommend selecting English, especially if you're learning or following tutorials. Using your local language might make it harder to find help later. Next, you'll see accessibility options. If you need any special settings, adjust them here. Otherwise, just click Next. Now choose your keyboard layout, in most cases. It will detect the correct layout automatically, if not, you can manually select it or test the keys to be sure. You'll then see an option to connect to the internet. If you want Ubuntu to download updates during installation, you can connect now, but it might slow things down. Since we'll update everything later, I recommend skipping this for now and continuing without connecting. Next, choose Install Ubuntu. Now select Interactive Installation, then click Next. Then it will ask which apps you'd like to install to start with. There are two options, Default, which installs essential apps, and Extended, which includes more software. For us, we'll choose Default, it's a clean setup with just the basics. Later, if we need any additional apps, we can always install them ourselves. You'll now be asked about installing third-party software. For now, leave the boxes unchecked and continue. Finally, Ubuntu will ask how you want to install it. Choose Erase Disk and install Ubuntu. Don't worry, this doesn't affect your real system. It only applies to the virtual hard drive we created earlier. Even if Ubuntu erases everything in this virtual space, your actual computer remains safe and untouched. Click Next to continue. Now it's time to set up your user account for Ubuntu. First, type your name, this will also set your computer name automatically, but you can change it if you like. Next, create a username, this is what you'll use to log in, then choose a password. Since we're installing Ubuntu for educational purposes, you can use a simple password like 1234. But if this were your main system, I'd recommend using a strong, secure password. Once you've filled out the details, click Next. Now select your time zone, this helps Ubuntu set the correct clock. Finally, click Install. Ubuntu will now begin installing on the virtual machine. This can take several minutes, depending on your system speed. When it's done, click Restart now. Then it might say, please remove the installation medium and press enter. Even though we didn't use a USB drive, VirtualBox treats the ISO file like one. Just press enter, VirtualBox will automatically eject the ISO, and Ubuntu will reboot. After the restart, Ubuntu will boot from the virtual hard disk, this time, it's fully installed. You'll see the login screen, click on your user account, then enter the password you created earlier and press enter to log in. On the first login, Ubuntu will guide you through a short welcome tour, you can click next through each screen or just skip it for now. And that's it, you've successfully installed Ubuntu in VirtualBox on your computer. You now have a full Ubuntu system running safely inside your existing OS. You can try out Linux, learn the terminal, or experiment without any risk to your main system. To shut down Ubuntu, just click the power icon and choose power off, just like a regular computer. The virtual machine window will close after Ubuntu powers off. What we did here is just the beginning, now that Ubuntu is installed, we'll start learning how to use it, especially the Linux terminal, which is the core of everything. Don't worry, I'll walk you through it, step by step, from basic to advanced commands. We'll go from beginner to power user in future videos. So if you found this tutorial helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me and motivates me to create more tutorials like this. And if you have any questions, or want to try a specific Linux distro, let me know in the comments. I read all of them, and I'd love to help. Thanks for watching, and welcome to the world of Linux.